Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about prepositions of place. You've probably watched a few English lessons on YouTube about prepositions of place. There are prepositions like in, on, at, by, uh, those types of things, those types of words. Um and in those lessons, uh people usually try to explain when to use them. I've done a lesson on this myself. Uh in this lesson though, I've tried to pick some really common English phrases with those prepositions in them and some other ones so that you can see them in context with a picture. So, I'll be showing you pictures and then describing that picture using a small phrase with the preposition of place in it. So, I think that should help if you have a visual reference and you have an English teacher explaining it while showing you the visual reference, maybe that will help you remember some of these because I'll be honest, prepositions of place in English are a little bit confusing. Um sometimes I don't even understand why we use the preposition we do but uh anyways, welcome to this English lesson about prepositions of place. In a tree. So, it's interesting when you talk about trees. If you look over here, this monkey is in a tree. If we go back to this picture, this owl is in a tree. This owl is on a branch though. So, this monkey is in a tree. You sometimes will see birds in trees. Sometimes, if you think back to your childhood, maybe you would climb a tree. I came home from work one day and as I walked under a tree, uh someone said hi to me and I realized one of my kids was in the tree. So, we use the verb or we use the preposition in when we talk about trees but we have to be a little bit careful because on the next slide, I'm going to use on a tree. So, these are blossoms. These blossoms are on the tree. They're on a tree. In the spring here, the trees don't have leaves but eventually, the trees will have leaves on them. So, you have to be careful. When there is something like a monkey in the tree, we use in the tree but when we talk about leaves and blossoms, we then say on the tree. And then sometimes you stand under a tree. So, I like standing under a tree especially when it's really, really hot outside. It's nice to stand under a tree because there is shade under a tree. So, if it's a hot day and you want to cool off, sometimes someone will say, hey, let's go stand under a tree because it's hot. Let's go stand in the shade. So, notice we stand under the tree but you can also say that you are standing or sitting in the shade. So, we switch to the preposition in. It's nice to stand in the shade. Uh, it, I've been standing in the shade a lot this summer. Whenever I am needing a small break from working outside, I will often go and stand in the shade and have a drink of water. That's uh that's a nice place to go in the shade. It's a nice place to read a book too. This lady is reading a book in the shade. This cat is in a box. This is one of your basic usages. Whenever you have a container, we always use in. Last week, I did a lesson about storage. I think if I think quickly, I put my recycling in the recycling bin. This cat is in a box. Sometimes we put um we actually have milk crates and the milk comes in the crate. So, whenever you have a container, you almost always will use the preposition in. It just makes the most sense. Of course, when you have a book, you will put the book on a shelf but if you have a piece of furniture called a bookcase, you will put the book in a bookcase. So, here you can see the book is actually the reason we're using on is because the book is on the shelf. I'm not supposed to use the word to define the word but these books are not under or beside. They're on the shelf but if you have this piece of furniture, if you have a bookcase, you would say these books are in the bookcase. If Jen said to me, where's the recipe book? I could say, oh, it's in the bookcase in the back room. I could also say it's on a shelf in the bookcase. So, we can kind of combine them together. Hopefully, I'm not making this lesson too confusing. And here you can see that these picture frames are on top of the bookcase. So, you can put things in a bookcase. You can put things on top of a bookcase. You can also put them on. I don't know why we sometimes use the phrase on top of. Um I think it's just sometimes in English, we like to use more words than necessary. 
I could say these picture frames are on the bookcase but I could also say they are on top of the bookcase. I guess it's just a little more precise. A little more precise way to say it. When I get home from buying groceries. Sorry, I kind of have something in my eye here. There we go. When I get home from buying groceries, I put the groceries in the cupboard. The cold things I put in the fridge or in the freezer but I put the groceries in the cupboard if they are things like boxes or cans. If they don't need to go in the fridge and if they don't need to go in the freezer, I will put them in the cupboard. So, notice I'm using in again because these are all places where we store something and generally, we will use the word in when we talk about that. This girl is reading a book by the river. Now, sometimes people ask about the difference between by and beside. You could say that this girl is reading beside the river. You could say that she's reading by the river. It simply means she's not in the river and she's not far away from the river. She's close to the river. So, we would say she's reading a book by the river or she's reading a book beside the river. Um the other day, I went kayaking. Um and then I went down by the river to put my kayak in the river and then I went and did a little bit of kayaking. So, let's talk about stores for a bit. So, first of all, these people are in the store. This person is at the store and these shoes are from the store and this is in front of the store. So, stores are interesting because if I say to Jen, I'm going to go to Walmart. Um I'll meet you in the store. That means I will be inside of the store doing some shopping. If I say to Jen, meet me at the store, it kind of means I'll be waiting in front of it or I'll be by the entrance of the store. I'll meet you at Walmart. I'll meet you at the store. In definitely means that you're in the store and at definitely means that you're near the front of it in my mind. Um when you buy something, you buy it from the store and then when you wait for someone and you wanna be precise, you say that you're going to be in front of the store. But let me confuse you all for a minute. I could say um where did you get those shoes? Did you buy them online? No, I bought them in a store. I bought them at a store. I bought them from a store. For some reason with stores, it's very easy to use different prepositions and most of them are correct, okay? Um where do you get your shoes? I get my shoes in a store. I get my shoes from a store. I get my shoes at a store. All of those are correct. From and at sound the most correct to my ear but if you used in, it would be fine as well. I don't know why stores are unique in that way um but definitely um these three You can't really go wrong if you use one of them. You know, where do you buy your cereal? I buy my cereal from the store. I buy my cereal at the store. I was in the store the other day and I bought some some cereal when I was in the store. This cereal I bought in the store. Yeah, I would use at and from when talking about the things you bought. So, hopefully, I didn't confuse you. If I ever need to meet with you in a mall, I would say let's meet in front of the Walmart. So, I would use this phrase. Now, of course, uh, two last things and then we'll do some questions. Uh when you go for a ride, you go for a ride in the car. Um I when you get into a car, you get in the car and whenever we talk about cars and vans, we use in but when we talk about public transportation, we use on, okay? So, you're gonna go on a train. You're gonna go on a plane. Um there's a little bit of a distinction I'll give you. Um if you talk about how did you get there? You could say I got here in a car or I got here by car. If you someone asks how did you get here? You could say oh, I came on the train or I came by train. So, you can kind of use by as well to talk about those two. Out of the box. So, you put things in a box and then you later take things out of the box. So, this is kind of an action You know, he's taking the flowers out of the box. When you move, when you unpack, you take your things out of the boxes. So, it's not exactly um it's more describing the action than where things are in this case. You know, when you say the boy is in the tree, then we're talking about the location. This is more an action. You take things out of the box. 
The reverse would be the phrasal verb. You put things in the box. So, earlier they put the flowers in the box. Now, they're taking the flowers out of the box. So, let's talk about next two. So, in this picture, you see the two cars right here. These cars are next to each other. The car with the yellow sun protector is next to the other car with the red sun protector. The car way on the other side is not close to these but these cars are next to each other. The car on the right is next to the other car on the left. So, you can kind of see that next to means right beside. I'm going to sit sit beside you at the meeting. I'm going to sit next to you at the meeting. In this case, the car, this is not my car. This car is between the cars. So, we have a row of cars and this car is between the other two cars. So, sometimes people get a little confused with between and among. So, this car is between two other cars. This person is among the flowers. So, notice here the cars are in a row and this car is in the row and it is between the other two cars. In this case, there are flowers all around this girl. So, this girl is among the flowers. So, if you were waiting in line, you would have a person, you would be between two people when you're in line but if you're in a crowd, you are among other people because there's people all around you. So, hopefully, that makes sense. Between and among. Often, uh if you go to a building, uh the front of the building looks nice and you meet people in front of the building. You don't often meet people behind the building. It's a little uglier and darker at night and there's usually things like this garbage dumpster but this is definitely behind the building. Sometimes, there's an alley behind a building um and there's no real good reason to go behind a building I don't think. I'm uh someone who usually stays uh, in front of buildings. I, it's not that dangerous behind buildings at night in a dark city is it? I don't think so. Sometimes, when you go for um uh, a trip, you go on a plane and when you're on the plane, you'll you go above the clouds. I think we're all familiar with above. So, the simplest thing would be this key is on my hand. This key, if it was floating, would be above my hand, okay? So, on means that it's actually, you know, placed there whereas above means that there's some space between them. So, it's my tractor key by the way. Um and we also have below the water. So, you can go above the clouds in an airplane. You can go below the water in a submarine. So, again, below would mean that you are um underneath, I guess. I guess a better word for it is underwater in this case. So, this is not uh, technically part of the lesson but um in English, we don't often say I'm going to go swim below the water. We usually say I'm going to go swim underwater. The submarine goes below the water. More likely, we would say the submarine goes underwater. It just sounds a bit better. Sometimes, when you go to a restaurant or you go to see a movie, you might sit near the exit and we talked about near a little bit earlier. Um near doesn't mean right beside or next to. It can be but it usually means in the vicinity. Do you know that word vicinity? So, if I go shopping and if we meet Jen's sister, we usually try to park near each other. If we can, we park beside each other and more precise, we would say it's nice to park right beside each other but sometimes you can't but you still park near each other. So, maybe I'm in one row and my sister-in-law is a couple cars down parked in another row but we're still fairly close. Close enough to be able to talk we would say that we are near each other. Sometimes, you go to a restaurant and they give you a table near the door to the kitchen and that's not very nice because then the servers keep coming in and out and it's a little bit loud when that happens. Um so, I'm gonna talk about on the left and on the right. So, we use on the left and on the right sometimes to describe where something is. In this case, I'm using driving. In Canada, we drive on the right. I think in Britain and in Japan and in Australia, they drive on the left. So, we drive on the right in Canada. 
on the left, South Africa, drive on the left. You can also use this to talk about where something is. If I said to Jen, can you grab me a book off the shelf? And if she said, which one? I could say, oh, the one on the left. So, I'm directing her. But if you want to be more precise, we use to the left and to the right. So, here I could say, could you get the orange book? It's to the left of the red book. So, it's the book immediately to the left. You could say on the left but it's this sounds better to me. Can you get me the orange book? It's to the right of the blue book. Also, if I was giving instructions to someone, I could say put the orange book on the shelf to the left of the red book. Put the orange book on the shelf to the right of the blue book. So, that's That's how I interpret these different ways of saying it. On the left and on the right are used more to describe where something is and to the left and to the right are used a lot when you're telling someone to do something. Get me the book. It's to the left of the red book. I could say it's on the left. No, I would say the one that's to the left, the one that's to the right. You can't go wrong here though. If you use on the left or on the right, I think it's gonna sound okay. And I hope my explanation uh, helped a bit and wasn't too confusing. Hey, sometimes kids play with toys and they play on the floor. So, this is uh was one of my kids favorite places to play. They would often play on the floor. Um their toys would sometimes be on the floor. Sometimes as I mentioned last week, uh, I think someone joked, Mo joked about stepping on a Lego. Um my kids would leave their Lego which is a kind of toy on the floor. And then sometimes I would step on the Lego if it was on the floor. So, when we talk about the floor, we talk we use on. Interestingly enough though, we also hang things on the wall and we can say that things are on the ceiling as well. So, on the floor makes sense because when we talk about on, if I take this camera lens, I can put it on my hand. So, talking about things being on the floor makes a lot of sense. But we do also hang pictures on the wall. If you buy a poster of Justin Bieber, you might hang it on the wall in your room. On the wall in your room. Did you get that? On in. Um if you have some nice art, you would hang it on the wall. And then this ceiling fan is on the ceiling. Um sometimes you have a hanging plant and you will put a hook on the ceiling um so that you can have it hanging from the ceiling. So, it's interesting how we do this, right? Like the lights in this room are not on the ceiling. They're actually lamps but in the kitchen, we have a light on the ceiling. If something has a rope or chain, we would then say it's hanging from the ceiling, okay? So, that's kind of the difference between the two. And then, of course, if you go out to have fun, you might talk to someone at the party. If you go to a party, Um you might say, oh, I hope that I run into Joe at the party because I haven't seen him for a long time or I talked to um my cousin at the party last night. It was really nice to see her. I haven't seen her for a very long time. She was at the party. So, um let me just use a few phrases here though. In a week or two, I'm going to go to a party and I hope when I'm at that party, I have a good time. So, notice I'm going to go to the party. When I'm at that party, I hope I have a good time and I hope that uh, there are a lot of people at that party. It's not for my birthday by the way which is a mysterious day sometime in July or August and I may or may not be turning 51 this year although I think I mentioned last year that I turned 50. So, anyways, maybe you already know Um, but anyways, hopefully, I have a good time at the party. So, at home and at work, when you talk about where you are, right now, I'm at home. Uh, I've been at home for a couple weeks now. I haven't been at work for two weeks. Um when I am at work, um I'm very happy. I like the job that I do but I'm also very happy to be at home for a little while. It's very nice to have a bit of a break and to be at home. Now, interestingly, we don't use at home when we're talking about work though. So, recently, many people weren't able to go to work. So, they needed to work from home. So, we don't usually say, I'm going to work at home. 
if you work yeah, like during the pandemic, a lot of people would work from home. You can say that you're going to work at home but it's, I think it's more common to say from now. Like next Tuesday, I'm gonna work at home. No, I would say I'm gonna work from home. When you say that you're going to work from home, it implies that you're not going to be going to work that day. So, you're going to work from home. A lot of students had to learn from home uh, last year. Um they had um remote learning we called it and I had to work from home as well. When you talk about countries, we use in. I live in Canada. Um it's nice to live in Canada. I'm sure if you live in France, it's nice there as well. I'm sure if you live in Japan, it's great. I'm sure if you live in the United States, it's great. Um we use in. Um it's really cold in Canada in the winter and it's hot in Canada in the summer. So, in is what we use with countries unless you're traveling, right? I'm going to go to Canada or I came from Canada. So, to and from are a little different. They're very unique but uh, definitely um it's good to wear a coat in Canada in the winter. When you watch TV, you see things on TV. You know, oh, I saw that on TV the other day. I saw that on the news. I was watching TV and on TV, they said that the world is getting better. I I maybe that's hard to believe today but um when you uh you could say oh I saw that actor on TV the other day. Matt Damon was um on TV the other day. I saw him. He was being interviewed. I saw him on TV. When you talk about a building and if the building has multiple floors, we use on. So, where is your apartment? My apartment is on the third floor. Where is your apartment? My apartment is on the sixth floor. Where is your office? Our office is on the second floor. So, we use on when talking about where something is uh in regards to a building. So, it could be on the fifth floor or the sixth floor. Maybe it's on the tenth floor. That's a little high for me. When I stay in a hotel, I don't like staying really high up because I'm afraid of heights. By the way, I'm going to do a video about fears soon. So, we'll see how that goes. I did one before but I'm going to do another one. This man is in the river. So, we talked earlier about a girl who was reading beside the river. She was reading a book by the river. This man is definitely in the river. When you go in a boat though, you would say that you're on the river. So, when I go kayaking, I go kayaking. I guess I could say on the river but if I said in the river, no one would say that was a mistake. You go canoeing in a river. You go canoeing on a river. You can use in and on when you're using boats. Um but this guy's definitely in the river for sure. If he was on the shore, we would say uh he's fishing by the river but he's definitely fishing in the river. So, let's talk a little bit about in school and at school. If you learned to read, you probably learned to read in school. You probably learned to read at school. In those situations, it means the same thing. Um you learn a lot of things in school. You learn a lot of things at school. Um one of the reasons you go to school is so that you can learn new things and then later you can say, oh, I learned about that in school. I learned about that at school. But these students are in school. They're physically in the building. The same way the cat was in the box, these kids are in school. So, here we're talking about the things you learned. I learned how to add and subtract in school. I learned how to add and subtract at school. Today, I am in school. This boy is in school. Like he's physically actually in the building. Uh when you're driving, you stop at the light. So, when you see a traffic light, you stop at the light and you wait for the light to turn green. I think the colors are the same in every country of the world but definitely the other day, I was in town and I stopped at the light and the light was red forever. I'm exaggerating there but I stopped at the light and it was definitely um a long wait when I stopped at the light. So, let's talk about up the road, down the road. So, here's how this works. If the road is flat, if there is no hill, you can use either. If someone stopped here and said, do you know where Joe lives? I could say, oh, he lives up the road. Just drive up the road another five minutes. I could also say, Joe lives down the road. Just drive down the road another five minutes. So, if the road is flat, you can use up or down and it doesn't matter. 
If, however, the road is actually on a hill, you would probably say up the road to talk about up the hill and down the road to talk about down the hill, okay? So, again, if it's flat, use either. No one will blink an eye. That means no one will think you made a mistake. So, where does he live? Oh, up the road, uh, five miles. Where does she live? Oh, down the road, six kilometers. But if you are on a mountain, you would use up the road to talk about going up and down to go down. Sometimes the doorbell rings and someone is at the door. For us, it is most often the person delivering something from Amazon. The doorbell goes and we'll say, oh, somebody's at the door. Who's at the door? Oh, Oscar's barking. Someone is at the door. So, when someone comes to your house or apartment and knocks or rings the doorbell, we say that they are at the door. And let's talk a little bit about for dinner and at dinner. So, tonight we are going to have spaghetti for dinner. Yesterday, we had hamburgers for dinner. Two days ago, we had fried zucchini. Do you know what zucchini is? With um, a pasta meat sauce for dinner. When you talk about what you're eating, we use for. What are you going to have for dinner tonight? Oh, I think we're going to have uh, subs for dinner tonight. I think we're going to have pizza for dinner tonight. So, you can also use this when you say you can invite someone over for dinner, okay? So, I'm going to invite my family over for dinner on my birthday or did I already do that? Maybe I already invited my family over for dinner. Maybe my birthday was last week. Who knows? It's a mystery. Um but when you talk about the actual dining, you say at dinner. We had a nice conversation at dinner last night. Um we are going to talk about a new business proposal at dinner tonight. Um, I had a lovely time at dinner last time at last night. So, we use for to talk about the meal or the event like they're coming over for dinner or we're having spaghetti for dinner but when we talk about things that happened while we were eating, we use at. So, we would say um I had a nice time at dinner last night. Um yeah, what was my other one? It was really enjoyable at dinner last night. Yes, I would say that. So, anyways, for dinner, at dinner. 